India has just launched its heaviest ever communication satellite, CMS-03, also known as GSAT-7R, aboard its powerful launch vehicle, Mark III. The early morning liftoff on November 2nd marks a new chapter in India's bid for strategic dominance in space. But this launch isn't just about technology, it's about redemption. Because it comes just months after a war that revealed India's greatest vulnerability. Yes, I'm talking about the May 2025 conflict that left deep scars. Despite fielding superior aircraft, India suffered major losses early on in the conflict. Post-war analysis identified that the real weapon that turned the tide was information. The Pakistan Air Force, on the other hand, leveraged its indigenous Link-17 data link and Chinese space-based support to operate as a single integrated war machine. Fighters, AWACs, naval vessels and ground radar shared one synchronized digital picture. As DGISPR described afterwards, this was Pakistan's multi-domain operational capability, the seamless integration of land, air, sea and space. Analysts called it a network kill chain. For India, it was probably a wake-up call. And that's where CMS-03 enters the story. In a major strategic escalation, this new satellite weighing over 4.4 tons will occupy a geostationary orbit more than 35,000 kilometers above Earth, ensuring continuous coverage over the Indian Ocean. Its mission is to provide real-time, multi-band, secure communication for India's Navy, Air Force and Army, the very kind of connectivity gap that Link-17 exposed. Essentially, CMS-03 is India's orbital counter to Pakistan's data link network. This satellite links every node of India's tri-forces, ships, submarines, fighter squadrons, air defense batteries and command centers through encrypted space-based communication. Even in the event of jamming or cyber warfare, the network remains intact, resilient and entirely under Indian control. But across the border, Pakistan's space story has been quietly transforming too. This time, not just as a beneficiary of Chinese technology, but as a developing actor in its own right. In January 2025, Pakistan's Space and Upper Atmosphere Research Commission launched the electro-optical satellite E01, an indigenous Earth observation satellite designed for high-resolution imaging. Its civilian uses include agriculture, disaster management and resource monitoring, but analysts note that its potential as a dual-use application for surveillance and mapping is also possible. Then came the PRSC E01, launched aboard a Chinese Long March 2D rocket, strengthening Pakistan's Earth observation and remote sensing capabilities. Meanwhile, Parksat MM1 completed its first full operational year, expanding national connectivity, e-learning and telemedicine but also creating a foundation for a secure domestic communications network. And the cooperation doesn't stop there. Pakistan has become the first foreign nation invited to China's Tiangong Space Station Training Program, where two Pakistani astronaut candidates are now preparing for a mission aboard Tiangong targeted for 2026. It's a symbol of deepening China-Pakistan's strategic alignment in space and an opportunity for Pakistan to gain experience in human spaceflight, orbital operations and microgravity science. Collectively, these milestones mark Pakistan's transition from a satellite user to a space technology participant. Yet, behind this progress lies a stark imbalance. Suparco's annual budget stands at roughly 36 million US dollars, and India's ISRO, by contrast, operates on around 1.6 billion US dollars, which is much larger. This financial gulf explains Pakistan's continued reliance on China for launch services, satellite buses, and often the technology itself. While this partnership gives Pakistan immediate access to advanced capabilities, it also raises the question of self-reliance. Can Pakistan truly innovate if it remains dependent on external partners? Islamabad seems to think so. Pakistan's National Space Policy and Space Vision 2047 outline a long-term roadmap towards self-reliance, which includes indigenous satellite production, development of domestic launch vehicles, creation of sovereign data and communications network, and expansion of academic programs to build a homegrown talent base. 
But of course, achieving that vision will require massive investment and a shift in national priorities that treat space not as science but as security. From the battlefield to the stratosphere and now to orbit, South Asia's competition has entered a new phase, a race for information dominance. The 2025 war proved that data and connectivity can decide a battle before even the first missile is launched. Who knows, the next conflict may not even begin on Earth. In any case, we'll keep an eye out and you should like and subscribe to keep hearing from us.